What's up everybody, I'm JP from the Standard Speed Shop and this is my first YouTube video. I'm hoping that it turns out. Bear with me, it's my first try. And uh, basically what I wanna do is the same thing that I actually enjoy watching when I surf YouTube or online. It's the uh, build projects, the videos that show progression, um, and kind of the situations that you find yourself in when you're building these these older cars. In my case, personally, it's the original paint patina stuff that you give uh, modern performance to. All right, so let's talk about the build that's in the shop right now. Behind me is a 1955 Chevy 3100. And at first glance, you think, man, that thing is done. It's on air ride, it's got wheels, it has the right look. It looks like it's finished. But unfortunately for the customer and a lot of us, including myself more than one time, it's a case of buying something online, showing up, and it's not quite what you expected based off the description and photos. Um, a lot of times that happens when the customer just doesn't have anything to compare it to, or maybe they're new into this niche um, or hobby, which in this case is the classic truck world with LS swaps and modern power, etc. So. Um, like I said, I found myself in this position a bunch and usually it happens when you're just starting out. You know, if you look at this truck behind me, it looks good. I mean, there's, uh, uh, you would think that it's ready to ship, let's take it home, but that's not always the case. Uh, hiding underneath the, um, the exterior is a Crown Vic chassis and that is not ideal. Not saying it can't be done and make it work, but in this scenario, it is not ideal. Now, when you build these trucks, you have to figure out budget, what the end goal is, and sometimes Crown Vic chassis makes sense. You know, you this truck will go down the road. It'll make it to the uh, it'll make it to the grocery store. Are you going to enjoy that time? Probably not. Are you going to put all your blood, sweat, and tears and money into a truck? with the end result being suboptimal from, uh, from where it could be, that's completely up to the person doing it. But in, uh, in my learning experience, the best way to do it is right from the get-go. So, you know, it costs more time, more money, more effort to have it done half-ass and then have to come back and redo it. So, unfortunately, that's where we're at with this truck and, uh, and it's going to be a bit of a road to get there, but it will get there and completely transform the ride of this car. So let's talk about what happens when you get a truck home and it's not exactly what you wanted. Or you take it for a drive and you realize, hey, this thing rides like shit. What am I going to do with this thing? You know, it's, uh, it's something you really have to contemplate because how much more money are you going to throw into it? In what situation are you going to just take a hit, move on, and say that's it? You know, with the patina stuff, it's tough. It's uh, it's a different story because you know most people say, oh well, the the guts are good, but I just need to fix up the outside. Well, on the patina stuff, the outside is what we want. It's just the guts are what needs change. So, you know, generally speaking, when you find yourself in this situation, it's it's. A little bit of a financial burden because you just spent money on a quote built truck and now you have to throw more money into it um, so it's a uh, it's a balancing act to try to find the sweet spot and draw that line uh, from the get-go in terms of what you're gonna change what needs address and what you can uh, what you can keep so I believe we have found that line with this truck and we have a good plan but I think that uh, for you to understand why somebody would want to go down this path we have to go take it for a ride all right so we're on the road i want to just touch base on the interior and you're going to have to bear with me with the uh the road noise in this thing every single thing in this thing shake rattles and rolls so um first impression on the interior the seats aren't bad they're pretty comfortable um so that won't have to be uh won't have to be addressed and like I said before when it comes to rebuilding one of these trucks or cars that's already done it's about finding that line because you could simply blow the whole thing apart and completely redo it 
but you've then lost all that money you spent to get the truck to a quote built state so that's not suggested so it's always smart to find that line and find out what has to be changed and what can what can stay and the interior can stay the the handles the door panels Don't hit shit in this truck because 
you know, the whole thing will come apart. So that was just a little stick. Um, so we got a lot of work to do, but like I said, GSI is going to come in. We're going to do the chassis. This truck is on air ride. And I, and if you have to do a manual valve body air ride, no problem. Do what you have to do. But you can't simply just put switches in here without knowing what the bag pressure is. You know, if I let this down in the front, I have no idea what the pressure is the if the bag is or, or if I know if I'm high enough to make a turn or make a clearance. You have to know the bag pressure if you don't have the electronic management system, which I would hands down recommend 100% of the time. Uh, a system like AccuAir makes the, the driving, this whole part of it, completely a thing of the past. It is, uh, it, this is antiquated. It does not belong in, in modern uh, built cars. So that will be uh, addressed by AccuAir. You know, this, we're going like 20 miles an hour and this thing is just Droning, super loud, super annoying, uh, and, and honestly, uh, I made the wrong turn, so it's going to add probably five minutes to my trip, which I'm, which I'm not looking forward to. Um, but uh, but yeah, we, um, we I have some work to do with this truck, uh, but I'm really excited not only to see the finished product, but to give it back to the customer knowing this is where they started. You know, as soon as as soon as he jumps in the truck and he can go drive wherever he wants and not have to look out for sticks on the road, it's gonna be completely worth it for him to, to get, a, uh, get a functional truck in that sense. Fortunately for this, uh, for this customer, the trans is shifting well, the motor seems fine. Um, you know, it's just a, uh, I don't know the displacement, but it's a Vortec motor. I'm assuming it's a six liter. So it's a, it's a good starting point for a good cruiser. Um, and so that'll, uh, that'll save the customer a little bit of a headache, not having to, uh, to worry about buying a new motor and transmission. Um, we'll do a couple little performance tweaks to the motor, um, but the customer's goal for this truck is to make it drivable, make it enjoyable, and, uh, you know, make it a, a nice cruiser, you know, go to a show if he wants, drive it to work, uh, do what he has to do, um, and not have to worry about it, essentially. So like I said, the brakes work pretty good. Um, you know, it's just, you know, if you're on a perfectly flat road and you don't have to turn, the truck's great. But if you, if you hit anything in the road or, or you have to make an, uh, swerve out of the way for something, I mean, just how loose the suspension is. I mean, you can get this. That's not good. That is not what you want if you go for a, uh, for a test drive.
I could swipe right under the gas pedal. So the pedals need adjust, it needs to come down, the brake pedal needs to come down and probably back a little bit um, in order to uh, fit comfortably in this, uh, in this car, so. So in terms of engine management in a truck like this, I think it's best that I stick with the stock ECU. Uh, this is a complete pullout, so the harness is right out of the truck. So that'll be deleted. We'll go with a, uh, an aftermarket company to provide a new harness. But I believe that I will stick with the stock ECU just to keep the drivability there. And you can still tune it for the cam or whatever road uh, we go down with this. Even on a simple road like this, you can hear the, the tires rubbing. That would get annoying very quickly. <laughs> now this truck does have Dakota digital gauges. It's not the newest HDX version, but once again, that's something. I mean, it's just unbelievable how this thing, this thing, makes noise. I guarantee there is no dynamat, no nothing underneath this carpet. And you can really tell a difference. But like I was saying, the Dakota digital gauges, that will stay as is. No need to go down that road just for a little bit of a uh, an upgrade in terms of appearance. Uh, that's one thing that we'll, uh, we'll leave as is. No need to uh, spend the money on that. You know, it's, the thing that aggravates me even more is somebody built this car and gave it a, a thumbs up, gave it the approval to move to the next customer, which is unbelievable. You know, it's just, it goes to show how you have to do your homework, you have to do your research, you know, ask somebody that's been down this road before what they think of this car and, you know, if this thing is half as much as another truck, probably a reason why you know so um, so I just feel bad for customers and people that end up in this situation situation unknowingly after the checks been signed and you know the first test drive is an experience like that it's just uh, it's unfortunate and it's very common and uh, you know I don't know how to fix it you know transparency and quality but uh you know if you're missing both of those then you're gonna get something like this all right we made it back and i apologize i was probably a little hard on this truck i'm sorry but uh, i'm not sorry you know this is a, a good perspective not only to to educate somebody how they should ride and how they shouldn't ride but at the same time use this opportunity to show a good before and after scenario um, so right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the truck uh, and kind of show you some things that need change that, that bother me, um, that bother the customer. So we're here, so let's start in the back. The bed's okay. The bed, the wood's fine. Uh, what bothers me a little bit is the gap in the rails. I wouldn't be able to sleep at night if that was there, so that'll get addressed. Uh, like I said on the ride, the truck is gonna the body's basically the only thing we're gonna save in terms of chassis and suspension the uh, the wheels are gone the chassis is gone uh, the plumbing's gone all that is gone and uh, we're gonna be using the GSI chassis AccuWare we haven't picked wheels yet but that's uh, that's not time to make that decision um, we have a little ways to go but the body is gonna stay basically the same um, there's some things that have been blended that uh, I'm gonna try to make a little more realistic, um, but the body itself, we're not gonna we're not gonna address anything on the outside. All right, let's talk about the engine bay. Now, the en LS engine swap is in there, but and it doesn't look bad on screen, I'm sure. But there's a lot of things to take this to the next level. One, I don't like when the batteries are in the engine bay. 
I don't think there's any place for the battery up front. Yes, it makes it convenient. You can get access to it, charge it, swap it out. But there's ways to get around that in terms of, uh, of hiding the battery. Um, the setup here is basically straight out of whatever truck it came out of. You know, the, uh, the front pulleys are, are truck style, the water pumps truck style, and uh, that all has to go. We want to transform the, uh, the engine bay here because, I mean, simply, if, if you're using seven hose clamps to hold an intake on, uh, something needs to change. So, you know, it's just... Uh, it just really needs cleaned up. All right, guys, thanks for checking out the video. I hope this was informative. I hope you learned something. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up um, and stay tuned for the progress of this truck. Before you go, though, I do want to show you a couple other projects that I have going on right now that I, that I think you'll like. Let's go. All right, a few sneak peeks here. 55 Chevy truck. Big window, short bed truck that is uh, getting blown apart. It is going on this Roadster Shop LT4 combo that is over here in the corner to the left. Uh, this is a 57 Buick wagon, a Viper V10 six speed, awesome black patina, original paint car, going to be uh, pretty incredible. I've been slacking on it because the primary project in this garage right now is this 1933 Ford Roadster and it is Henry Ford steel but Henry Ford would probably roll over if he knew what motor was in this it's a 2JZ out of a Toyota Supra single turbo air to water intercooler going to be running MoTeC on this one really cool stick around I'm going to do this is going to be the next video to show you uh, where I am at with this build and uh and what's next so stay tuned thanks for watching if you like any of these bills or what i got going on subscribe thanks